Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in Detroit, Michigan, the Motor City, where we find a soft hard who tries to educate the judge on, uh, well, the Constitution, but only finds himself getting educated. And, well, it is freaking hilarious. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Nobody talk to me. All right, I'm going to just call his case numbers. Yeah, while well, she reads this aloud, I'm just going to double the speed of the video because... There's a lot to this particular part right here, and, uh, well, let's just hear it at double speed so you can get an idea of it, because I don't want to freaking bore you. That's much too early. Prepare to fast forward. Prepare to fast forward. Fast forward. Fast forwarding, sir. Expired plates. Yeah, I kind of figured uh, expired plates would be in there. The guy is definitely a sovereign citizen. But let's go ahead and listen to his, well, whatever he has to listen to. This should be entertaining. Appearances for the record, starting with counsel, please. Um, Judge, I'm. this is Attorney Herman Griffin. I did speak with the defendant. Um, I did talk to him, went over his rights. <laughs> However, he indicated to me that he wants to move forward without the assistance of counsel. And so I just wanted okay. to make sure that's on the record. And I'm going to go that's talk to Mr. Wallace. Well, no shit. Yeah, of course he would go pro se. What lead paint tricking self respecting Sovtard would go pro se? All right. Thank you so much. All right. Is that true, Mr. Williams? You want to move forward without counsel at this time? Correct. You know you have the absolute right to have counsel, especially with misdemeanors in these particular matters. Um, so, you, But at this point in time, you want to move forward on your own, Mr. Williams? I do. Okay. Mr. Williams, how would you like to proceed? Um, do you want to have a bench trial, a jury trial, or do you want to try and resolve these matters? I'm trying to resolve them today. And I have a couple of questions okay. before you move forward. Well, we'll see if I can answer them because I can't give you counsel because I'm not an attorney. I'm not practicing uh, as an attorney. Okay, what's up, what's up, Mr. Williams? All right, but so before you move any further, um, what jurisdiction is is the court under? Is it civil or criminal? This is so uh, traffic kind of acts like a hybrid. Um, so we are. Um, it's criminal because it's misdemeanor. So with it carries the underline that you can have like jail time and fines. Um, usually with civil, it's just going to be fines and it's not going to be the opportunity to have jail time. And that's why you have the ability to be able to have um, counsel appointed to you because you get the, the rights kick in, right? You can have a jury trial. You can have a trial by a juror. So um, we're under the jurisdiction of, I would say, more criminal matters for these. Okay, so in the Constitution grants two jurisdiction that's uh, one under the common law and the other under constitutes under the condition of a uh, contract criminal aspects of a colorable amnesty jurisdiction. So, so which this one is body? under so this is under the just the misdemeanor um state ordinances um as well as was well, not state ordinances the misdemeanor crimes under the state law as well as under the city ordinance violations. 
that these fall, fall under. So each city is in order to govern itself. You have the absolute power of the United States of America. After you have the absolute power of the United States of America, what they've done is they've divvied up the opportunity for states to control their own entities as long as they don't interfere with the federal stuff. So they can be more stringent than the federal laws, but they can't be any, any less stringent than the federal laws. And the same trickles down in the state. So then you have the state government and then you have city government laws, which allow the opportunity for them to create ordinances and rules to be followed by those individual states. So that's how we kind of operate. And so we are able to function and operate as a city if you avail yourself to the operations of a city. What she just said is basic civics right there. It starts with the 10th Amendment granting the states the rights to create laws that are not Covered the Constitution. You have the federal level, you have the state level, you have county level, and then you have the city level. I mean, it just trickles down, like she said. That's the way it's worked for quite a long time in this country, dude. But of course, these soft hearts have their own ideas about what the civics of our country really are, according to them. But of course, it's just one big giant lie of a fantasy world that they've cooked up anyway. Or is they? I uh, didn't get that. I know. So uh, you're operating under the state law city ordinances and state ordinance by uh, state misdemeanor violations. So it's colorable admiralty jurisdiction. What the fuck? <laughs> Oh my goodness, you really are a moron, aren't you? Admiralty law, does it look like we're sailing around the waters of the United States right now, you gibbering moron? But of course, this idiot might just think that his car is actually a land yacht or something like that. Oh well, we've seen it before. Contracts. So that's, that's archaic law, and what I mean by that is that that's, um, although we use those terms, those Latin derivatives during law school, the actual practice is known as state has uh, the ability to govern its people and the city has further governance over its people um, to be able to make sure that rule and order is continued and followed within the state guidelines. All right, Mr. Williams, what do you want to do, though? Because we're not going to have a question well, and answer service. I've been on the docket for a while. If you do want to, you can come back at 1.30, and I'll be more than happy to continue this educational opportunity. But no, I want a motion to dismiss for failure to... Okay. All right. So that's not going to be granted, and uh, that's not the correct order to do it. So if you wanted to file something like this, you could be able to file it and make the legal arguments appropriate for these matters, but you would have to state some type of legal reasoning as to why. And jurisdiction is not a legal reason. Well, it's a legal reasoning, but you can write that and see how you can find the laws that are current to our state constitution, as well as the constitution of the city of Detroit and the rules and opportunities to be able to follow that. that. So if you would like to file a motion, you can have a motion date and time to be able to file that. I'm not going to dismiss them today, though. So why can I get dismissed today? Because these are ordinances that you are to follow within the city. There are rules that we follow as human beings in the United under, States, of America, under, under, especially under, under, under city. Under the city of you are a resident of the state of Michigan and the city of Detroit. But under what contract? Under common law or it's not contract? a contract? You know. These are not contracts, okay? So under, these under are just regular issue? rules. So you listen, Mr. Williams. You can either handle these matters, or they'll just go back into default and be in no, default, handle, as well as they'll be matters. under warrant status. I'm listen. I know you are trying to handle them, but you want them dismissed. They are rules that you have to follow as a citizen of the United States of America, more importantly, as the state of Michigan, and as someone who traversed, traveled, moved about in the city of Detroit. These are the rules that have been established for reasons, and sometimes their underlying reasons are reasons that we all can see and understand clearly. Sometimes the reasons are not reasons that we really understand, but these are the rules that have been set into place. We have jurisdiction because you are a body, a person, an entity, a being that is located within the confines of the state of Michigan as of right now, 
who has done stuff within the state of Michigan, in the city of Detroit. And that's why we have the opportunity to be able to do these things. All right. So well, first, attorney I'm not, Griffin, I'm not US. all right. All right. I can't, Mr. Williams. I can't argue back and forth today with you. I've had an amazingly long docket this morning. So I told you, you can come back and we can have this discussion at 1.30, but I need to finish the rest of the people from this morning's docket before I continue to have this discussion. So I don't mind. We can do it at 1.30, but I got to finish my morning docket before we have all these philosophical discussions on why I have jurisdiction over you as a court. Well said, Judge. Well said. You roasted and toasted that soft tart, but I doubt it'll really cause any effect toward him because, well, he's supremely undereducated in any field that he touches. But let's carry on, shall we? Five hours later. Okay, I told you, Mr. Williams, to come back at one thirty. My staff needs a break, and I need a break as well. <laughs> can I can I come in, or I gotta do the video? You can do video. You want to have an in-court... Listen, if you want to have an in-court discussion about all of this, I want written file motions for all of this. I'm not going to have a philosophy discussion about why we have jurisdiction over you. So you need to file motions, the appropriate motions with the court that go with each one of the things that you're talking about that you want to happen. I'm not, I'm going to repeat, I'm not going to just dismiss them because you think I don't have jurisdiction. I'm not. But you have Honor, to show me why we don't have jurisdiction over you. But Your Honor, you're supposed to be an unbiased arbiter. You're, are you that freaking stupid? Are you unaware that the courts are all about argument? You have the plaintiff and you have the defendant. The plaintiff makes an argument that the defendant is guilty of charge a or whatever, and the defendant has to, well, defend himself through an argumentative process. The, the, the plaintiff has the uh, burden of proof to try to prove to everybody that the defendant is guilty of the thing that he's charged with, while the defendant has to, well, come up with a defense to counter the arguments of the uh, plaintiff while well, the judge sits there and makes sure that the rules are followed and that everything is fair the judge in this case in most any case is impartial they have no stake in it uh, well, they're not supposed to anyway. So you trying to get around the process of the argument and persuasion part of court is not going to happen, dude. You've got to uh, prove that you are innocent of these charges. And, well, you're not doing a very good job of it already, dude. We're supposed to be in between right. prosecutors. That's the right. Prosecutor need to explain how she got jurisdiction over you. So you have, and their exp explanation comes when you file a motion. Okay. So you need to file a motion so that they can know what legal principles and arguments you're standing on, so that they can properly respond to it. If you just say that you don't have jurisdiction, I'm going to tell them that as an officer of the court, we take judicial notice that if you were in the city of Detroit operating or doing any of these things that that's why they drew the ticket on you but if there's a jurisdictional issue you have to state a legal reasoning why and give the prosecutor's office time to respond to your legal factual basis and reasoning as to why that happens so i'm more than welcome i'll set a, a hearing date to give you motion times to be able to do that but you have to file a written motion as to why you believe legally they don't have jurisdiction over you but ain't that state duty? That's the reason why I'm here. They the should. duty of it. So I'm telling you, I take judicial notice that the ticket was written in the city of Detroit. So they have a legal reason and basis for giving you the ticket. You hear that? That's the first thing. So right. I'm already stating as an officer of the court that by receiving these tickets, they have a legal reason and jurisdiction over you. Right. But if, but if, if you, you believe if you, they if you, don't. If you, if you run my name, you will see that I surrendered my state ID and I have a passport, right? I have no 
contracts with the Secretary of State whatsoever. So I, you just they have wrote me a ticket. United they wrote States me a, of America, me a which is an even higher jurisdiction than us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm, I'm, right. So the the SOS, I don't have no contracts with them. And if you run it, so just because you don't avail yourself of the formal process doesn't mean that you cannot be held to the standards and rules of the Secretary of State's office. That's not how this works. So you don't sever ties. That's not how it works. If you avail yourself to the rules, if you allow yourself to get into a vehicle and drive on the streets in the state of Michigan, in the city of Detroit, you have now automatically availed yourself to the to the laws, to the civil infractions, to the misdemeanors which lie within this state and the city bounds. Damn right, sister. Damn right. The moment that you start driving that vehicle, you are responsible for whatever happens to anybody out on the public highways, which is why you need insurances, which is why you need a driver's license. You just can't sever ties with the state and hope it works out for you, because if you get in an accident and or hurt somebody or anything like that, it's all on your head as somebody who has taken responsibility just by sitting sitting behind the wheel of that vehicle and uh, going out on the open public roads, you dumbass. That's not what the Constitution said. And you took an oath. I did. Right. I took lots of oaths, too, just so you know. Mm -hmm. I done took all kinds of oaths to be an attorney, to be an, a judge, to be... Uh, when I graduated from college, I'm sure I took some oaths. I've taken oaths. And that's why I can say with a straight face and a clear conscience that I am following the rules of the state of Michigan and the city of Detroit when I say that they have the ability and the right to write tickets to people who traverse, travel, go upon the city streets of the city of Detroit, the state of Michigan, and to issue tickets to individuals. We deputize those individuals on the street. Now, whether or not it's true, that's another type of hearing. Whether or not these allegations are uh, that have been alleged are true, that's not the hearing that I'm deciding today. Mm -hmm. what, unless you want to take uh, some type of offer. The only thing I'm deciding today is whether or not you want to move forward with some type of plea or whether or not you want to move forward with a trial or whether or not you want to move forward in that type of capacity and way. So, and you said that you don't believe that we have jurisdiction or that the, that the, these tickets are not. So I'm telling you, if you don't believe it's jurisdiction, you have to file a written legal document that says yeah, why it. you don't believe that they have jurisdiction. And so that they can respond to it legally, like on a legal basis. I'll do that. Okay, so how much time do you need, Mr. Williams, to have the hearing? Because what they do is they'll you you'll submit your uh your written stuff. They'll get time to be able to respond, um, and then you'll have a copy of that so that you can make sure that you can uh understand what's going on. So how much time do you need? Give me to January. Okay. Give January. So we'll have to come back on January. 30th, that gives you 90 days. I need the motion filed before then, though. So I need the motion filed by January. Uh, on the record, recalling the matter of the people versus Timothy Williams and all his matters. Um, can I have your name for the record, sir? Uh, Timothy Williams. All right. And then, City, I'll make sure that also the attorney that's typically assigned knows this as well. I'll set it that it be, I'm trying to find a calendar for January, sorry. Okay, all right. Um, so I'm gonna have a hearing in this matter. Let's do it on a Thursday. So let's do it February 1st, cause I'm gonna need time. February 1st, 2024 is gonna be the actual hearing date though. But I'm gonna have you submit your motion no later than January the 12th. And then there needs to be a response from the people by January 26th. And we'll have the motion hearing on February 
the first. Okay, okay, Your Honor, I'm sorry. I was in another courtroom. This is the prosecutor, Dia Chiku Mason. So okay. we're doing on, on Mr. Williams, Timothy Williams. So I'm, he wants to file a motion. I told him if he wants to file a motion, it needs to be filed no later than January 12th. The people have the uh, response it needs to be by January 26th. And the hearing will be February 1st. Very good, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. There's nothing further. That concludes this hearing for today. Your Honor, am, am I able to come in or is it going to be Are going? you what? Am I able to come in? On this? You can physically come in if you want to. You want to have it in person? Yep. Okay. In person on January, on February the 1st, 2024, okay? Yep. All right. All right. That concludes this hearing. Bond will continue at $0 personal. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. Well, it seemed like a light just turned on in his head right there at some point because he stopped and thought about it and realized, hey, wait a minute, I've got to file a motion. I've got to follow the rules of this court if I want to get out of this with my skin intact. Well, let's just see how long that lasts because, well, I will keep an eye out the, on February 1st or a little after that to see what the results of this particular trial are. I mean, this should be pretty interesting if he goes pro se. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?